three engineers to put a brushless motor in a bike and it doesn't even work properly. Seems to work pretty well to me. So from the success of the electric bike video that I uploaded a couple weeks back, uh, I got quite a lot of questions that I need to answer. So this is gonna be my first ever Q&A video on this channel. And uh, let me know what you think. So first question, what about the induced current from the motor flowing back into the SC when you pedal? Is there a chance of it doing damage to it? The speed controller that I'm using is a VESC, or as some people call a VESC, and it's actually got regenerative braking so uh, any current that is put back into the speed controller is actually uh, put towards charging the battery and um, i've also disabled that and it still seems to work fine i've uh, i've gone down hills and everything and um, nothing seemed to overheat or burn out so um, yeah it all seems fine to me the vesc is a pretty cool bit of equipment um, if you actually go and read on the open source website there's uh, a lot of information about it and all the different applications that you can use it for. It's, uh, it's, got, it's, got, um, it's quite a versatile piece of uh, equipment. So go check it out in the link in the description below. How did you turn a fixie into a freewheeling single speed? This comment came up quite a few times in uh, the comment section uh, saying this bike is not a fixie, blah, blah, blah. Um, I know it's not a fixie uh, the way that I have it set up at least. Uh, it's got what's called a flip-flop hub, which I actually mentioned in the video. Uh, one side is a fixed sprocket, and one side is a freewheel sprocket. Um, and in the video, I mentioned that I took the fixed sprocket off and replaced it with my own 3D printed pulley, uh, which left the other side of the wheel to be a freewheel. So, although the bike is sold as a fixie, um, I didn't have it set up as that. So, uh, yeah, I do understand it's not a fixie. Would the parts be better printed in ABS or PET? I guess ABS might be too brittle. Any filament with higher temp spec and also good mechanical strength. I actually printed all my parts in PLA, mainly because they're really easy to print and also because I understand the strength properties of PLA quite well uh, after, after designing my 3D printable plane, uh, which you may have seen from my other video. PLA usually gets its uh, brittle tendencies from people printing it at too low of a temperature. Uh, I found that if you print it at a really low temperature, the uh, strength between these layers becomes really brittle. However, I'm not saying that PLA is less brittle than ABS. In fact, the stiffness of PLA is higher than ABS, but the strength of PLA is lower. So there's a difference between uh, strength and stiffness, which I'm not going to go into, this, into in this video. But essentially, ABS can hold a stronger amount of force, but it will also bend more than PLA. I also use PLA because I knew that other people might want to build this and a lot of people uh, haven't got experience with printing ABS because it's a bit of a pain to print. Uh, PLA is nice and easy so if I could get it to work to print with PLA then uh, more people would be able to attempt to try it. Can you ride this e-bike in the rain? You can ride it in the rain, uh, that's why I designed the electronics box which the speed controller fits into and the, also the Arduino chip. Uh, however the box alone is not waterproof. I actually took it out for a ride and I rode through a puddle and the, uh, the water squirted up from the, the back wheel and went straight into the uh, box that seeped through one of the gaps. Uh, it didn't do any uh, permanent damage, it just made the speed controller uh, freak out for a couple hours. But as soon as it dried out it was fine. So um, if you do plan to ride it in the rain or go through any puddles, which I expect most people will do, uh, seeing as it's a bike, uh, I recommend sealing all of the holes with some kind of uh, silicon, you know, bath sealant, anything, uh, even even some kind of glue will seal it off well. The motor is rated for around two kilowatts. Isn't it an overkill? And are you underpowering it? The motor is rated for two kilowatts. However, I am actually underpowering it. I found at first, which I didn't manage to show in my previous video, uh, that as soon as you draw over 60 amps, the motor seemed to cut out. And this cutting out was uh, due to the motor losing phase, uh, due to the speed controller trying to accelerate it quicker than it can accelerate the bike. Uh, it's essentially stalling the motor. So when I limited the output of the speed controller to 50 amps, uh, it completely removed this issue. So I can now go full wide open throttle and uh, the motor doesn't stall at all. Using this maximum output limit of 50 amps and multiplying it by the maximum voltage of the battery, uh, is 25.2 volts, you get a maximum output power of 
1260 watts uh, which is it's not a huge amount it's not two kilowatts but then again it is uh, about five times over the legal limit in most countries uh, so I do not recommend you riding it on the road um, without some kind of license insurance and all that kind of stuff. I do plan to electrify my mountain board. Did you build the VESC yourself? I did not build the uh, VESC myself. I actually bought it ready-made from a UK company. Uh, in my previous video, uh, you may have noticed that I put links to the open source website in the description. Uh, that was mainly because this uh, video goes out to a worldwide audience. Uh, I didn't want to just put a UK distributor, uh, whereas if you're in the US or anywhere else in the world, uh, you might want a closer distributor. So I just put the uh, link to the open source thing and then um, assumed that people uh, would be able to search that on Google and find closer distributor distributors to themselves. Great video, is this safe? I guess if you know how to ride a bike, then yeah. I'm an electrical guy and we use KV to mean kilovolts. You're saying your motor is 149 kilovolts, or did I miss something? This is kind of a, mis a common misunderstanding uh, between brushless motor companies and most uh, electrical engineers. Uh, the term KV is actually related to the maximum RPM of the motor. The K part of the KV doesn't mean killer, as in a thousand, a thousand volts. It actually is a constant uh, and it actually equals the number before it. So it might say uh, 149 KV, but it actually means that K value equals 149. So K times V equals the RPM. So 149 times the volts equals the total RPM. Did you try it with the 12S battery? For those of you that don't know, a 6S battery is what I used, which means that fully charged it's at 25 volts and discharged it's roughly 22.2 volts. A 12S battery is essentially double the voltage, so it's two 6S in series. This will take it to roughly 50 volts uh, at maximum charge. Due to what I've just said in the previous question, uh, the maximum RPM of the motor is the K times the V. So if I go to 12 cell, it actually doubles the top speed, theoretically. Obviously with efficiency losses and air resistance, it won't reach double the speed as if I had 6S. I mean, it tops out about 20 miles an hour now. And with 12 cell, I'd estimate 30, maybe 35. It wouldn't reach 40. In the future, I probably will try 12S uh, once I get bored of this setup, uh, get bored of the speed. Um, but when I do, I will probably have to adjust the gear ratio to uh, account for this uh, doubling maximum RPM of the motor. Um, so if I, if I double the RPM of the motor and then change the gear ratio so that the RPM at the back wheel is still the same, uh, theoretically, I believe this will increase the torque of the torque at the back wheel so the acceleration will be better and it will climb up hills. But I think I'll save that for a future video. So onto the question that you've all been waiting for. What is the range? So I haven't got a watt meter for the bike, so it's kind of hard to tell you exactly how many watts it uses or milliamps it uses at exactly which point, um, you know, like riding up a hill, accelerating, cruising, going down hills, etc. But what I can tell you is the average uh, values due to, uh, when I charge my batteries, it tells me how many milliamps I put back in. So over the 50 or 60 miles that I've ridden the bike so far, uh, I can tell you that without pedaling, it uses about 950 milliamps per mile. And that's with a 25 to 22 uh, volt battery. So uh, I'll calculate the watts per mile or kilometer and, and put it up here. So with pedaling, it uses about 650 milliamps per mile. So in terms of range of the whole bike, if I don't pedal, out of a six cell 5,000 milliamp battery pack, I can safely get about 4.2 miles. And with pedaling and just using the motor to assist me up hills and into the wind, etc., uh, I can get about seven miles. So it's, it's pretty decent. And I've got, um, I've got three batteries, three six cell 5,000 batteries, which gives me a range of about 15 miles, um, you know, just pedaling every so often and, uh, you know, cruising with my feet still. The bike does about 20 miles an hour. Um, I went on a bike ride the other day, did about 14 miles and actually averaged 21 miles an hour. I'm, uh, I'm guessing that I managed to average 20 miles an hour uphill and then down some hills I went a bit over. Uh, so that's, that's pretty good. And um, in terms of climbing hills, uh, just sort of pedal at a constant rate and um, you can climb up most hills pretty easily. 
Uh, I normally just pedal just to keep the RPM of the motor up so that it's not strained too much and uh, that also saves battery. But cycling up a pretty steep hill which you would struggle on on the stock gear ratio of this bike uh, I can climb up at 20 miles an hour easy there's, there's no way even a pro cyclist would keep up with it um, over a distance of say 10 miles in terms of upgrades I will probably be upgrading it to 12 cell in the future with a di different gear ratio however I don't think this will be for at least a, a couple months um, in the future mainly because it rides really nice now it gets me from A to B uh, pretty easily without you know breaking a sweat so um, yeah it's working really well in terms of performance okay that's the end of the video guys thanks for watching my first ever Q&A video uh, it'd be great to get your feedback because um, I get quite a lot of questions on some of my projects and uh, you know I think it's better to address them in a video rather than in the comment section and this way that everyone else can see them uh, if they can't be bothered to read through all the comments so uh, let me know if you like this video and uh, I'd like to thank you for watching Please subscribe to see more videos and uh, goodbye.